Good morning friends, Sean here once again, and we have another viewer suggested logic puzzle. This time it's from Tosfia. Uh, this is a great suggestion, Tosfia. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, this is very much a puzzle that works just like Wordle, except with math equations instead of a valid English word. Uh, this puzzle requires your guesses to be true math equations, including uh, one or more of the basic mathematical operators, plus, minus, divide, or multiply, um, and an equal sign in the middle of the guess. Um, definitely a, a, an interesting uh, concept and an interesting uh, change to the uh, to the normal um, puzzles that we've been seeing. So really excited about this. Um, <clears throat> this puzzle also has a daily solution or a, a unique uh, solution every day. Um, so if you do want to try this puzzle yourself before seeing the answer here, feel free to pause the video and go to nerdlegame.com. That link is in the video description below as well. Uh, if you like this content, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. Uh, but first, start, let's start uh, talking about this puzzle. So, I'm going to jump in here for a few different reasons. Uh, number one, this sort of defines what the um, what your guess is. And this is the important line here. Uh, a word must be a calculation that is mathematically correct. So we can't just say, you know, 9 plus 18 equals 4. Uh, we need to have this be an actual uh, real guess uh, that does fill all eight slots of the guess. Um, also, the number on the right of the equals is is just a number. So that's not, we're not going to have to do uh, 4 plus 5 equals 40 divided by 2. Uh, the, the number to the right is just going to be a number, so we don't have to balance two different equations. Um, and this is going to come into play, um, I think, in more difficult puzzles where the order of operations is going to come into play. So we do multiplic multiplication and division before addition and subtraction. Um, I'm going to try to keep that in mind. I, I don't think with the number of uh, squares that we have to fill in, I don't think this is going to come into play too often, but we'll see. I haven't done this before. Um, I haven't tried this puzzle at all. Uh, this is my first time attempting any of these, uh, but I have reviewed the rules and I have some ideas about how to approach this. So I want to revisit um, the progenitor game that, that's brought about Wordle and Nerdle and all these types of things, and that is Mastermind. Um, there's been a lot of studies of, of the optimal approach to Mastermind. Um, instead of letters or numbers in Mastermind, you have pegs, uh, pegged colors. And your guess includes, um, I think, five or six colors. I don't remember how many pegs that you get. I think it's actually just four. Um, four different colors. Um, so the one approach that has proved to be very helpful in that, and we're going to use numbers here instead of letters, instead of colors, because I can't enter blue, green, red on these things. Uh, but one approach that's been very helpful um, and a good strategy in Mastermind is to start with two colors. I'm going to choose one and two as my substitute for colors, but doing half of the puzzle in one color and half the puzzle in the other one. That means for me doing half ones, half twos. What that does is that basically tells me how many of each are in there, if not more. Um, for example, if you end up filling all those ones in a theoretical guess that this would be applicable, uh, there's potential to be more, but what this does is it tells you if there is a one in the puzzle, you will know if it's in the first half exactly where it is because it'll show up green. Um, in this puzzle, do note that uh, red is the um, correct but in the wrong spot indicator here, and black is not in the spot, so red is our version in this puzzle of the yellow that's in Wordle, and black is the version uh, of that grayed out uh, square. So if it shows up green, we know that the one is exactly where it shows up. If it shows up red, we know it's in the second half, and throughout the rest of this we can start to deduce one by one, is it here, is it here, is it here, is it here. The same with the twos except on the opposite side. So I wanted to use that strategy to begin this, which makes for a very easy 
uh, puzzle here. Uh, the other thing I noted right away, um, I was curious about how big these numbers could get. And what you'll notice here is if you have that equal sign, I'm just going to use zeros to, or yeah, I can use dashes in this. This is great. If that equal sign ends up right here and you have a four uh, digit number on the right side, the biggest you can get on the left side is nine times nine is 81. Um, so there's no way that this can be a four digit number. Now this definitely can be um, right here to be a three digit number. Lots of combinations that you can create that with. Uh, so it looks like what's on the right side is gonna be a one, two, or three digit number, but we're not gonna have to go too far into uh, any any math to get that those very large numbers. Uh, but yeah, going back to that, what I was talking about earlier, that ones and twos here, I'm gonna start by doing 11 plus 11 equals 22. And we're gonna see how far that gets us. Uh, what I'm looking for right now is basically what I just uh, said with the ones and twos, but also I wanna see where that equals sign goes. I wanna see if it's a three, two, or one digit number. Um, that'll give us a lot of information as to what the operand can be. So let's enter that guess here. Okay, so we have a 1 and a plus. This is going to be really interesting here. And that equal sign does go right there. So we have a two-digit number on the right. This is addition. Uh, we could theoretically have... Um, Oh, I wonder if order of, op uh, not order of operations, but the tr uh, transmutative property applies here. So three plus four in this puzzle is not the same as four plus three. Um, I haven't delved into the, I guess, what you would call a dictionary for this um, to see if, if you might have something like that where nine times eight is one guess, but eight times nine is another guess. I wonder if they did some sort of um, ordering there, so that's always larger on the left or smaller on the left, something like that, so we don't have uh, multiples, because that could really throw you off. <clears throat> Alright, what's our next step here? We want to figure out what's on the right of this equals sign, because that'll give us a lot of information. Um, let's find out where this plus, plus sign goes and find out if we have another operator here. Now this is where it's going to get really tricky. I'm going to start adding in zeros and threes is my new goal. So if that one, that one probably goes on the right. There's a slim chance that the one goes exactly where that uh, the plus previously went. Zeros and threes. What are we going to do here? I want to do uh, three plus. This might waste a little bit of something. No, let's try it anyway. Three plus four times three. Four times three is 12, plus the three is 15. That'll give us the one on the right side. And we'll test a five. I really like where that's going. Let's enter that. Perfect. So I think what we've deduced here, there's only one one in the puzzle. We know where the plus goes. Now we've got to start testing out sixes, sevens, eights, nines, and zeros. So how do we do that? How about six, six plus nine minus eight equals, this is also me testing something. Can we do O oh, seven? Is that a valid? It is a valid guess. We can include zero before a digit. Very helpful. Okay. So suddenly, we realize that we have a 9. We think we know where this uh, 
the zero probably goes at the end here as a 10. I think I see the answer to the puzzle, but I want to work this through. We know where the eight goes. This, uh, the subtraction sign right here is gotta be an operator. So that nine, the zero can't go at the beginning, or, or I guess it can go where the nine is, but I think that this puzzle is going to be nine plus eight over eight, oops, plus eight over eight equals 10. That's my guess. Nine plus eight divided by eight is one, nine plus one is 10. That's my guess. That is a very fun puzzle. I am very excited about that. I might just add that to the daily list. Do a Wordle once a day and a Nerdle once a day. <laughs> Maybe an Absurdle once a day. I can do as many Erdles and as there are. Maybe I get a pet turtle while we're at it. Uh, that is a very fun puzzle. Thank you so much, Tasfia, for the, the recommendation. Uh, very fun. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe. It really does help significantly. With the, and uh, share the video with anyone you think would enjoy some daily word puzzles. That's all for now, and we will see you all tomorrow.